I could do that all day, <laughs> except it'd probably break. Let's crack on. Hello and welcome to another Mr. Speed's Bike video and this one's a little bit different insofar as it's part two of the Panasonic MV V8000 <laughs> VHS um, video recorder. Uh, in part one we timed the deck and we did time the um, carriage as well, front loading system. Uh, but um, as you might have guessed if you watched all the way through the, the first parts, um, I forgot to connect um, the, the front connectors from the carriage. <laughs> and uh, That may well be all that's wrong with it, but I have a feeling there's going to be more than that. Um, I did time it. Um, it seemed to be fine when I ran it, uh, sort of out of out of deck, uh, but uh, obviously it didn't work and I think a lot of that's down to uh, me not plugging it in, but we'll see. Um, so this one, we're going to look at the carriage in a bit more detail and um, also go through the, the whole machine if it does work. Uh, the thing that concerns me is we do actually have a couple of bits of broken plastic um, which I think are in here, well, it's one key bit. So we have one rather interesting broken bit of plastic. And that does look like some kind of lever. Um, which is really concerning because when I looked at the, the carriage um, last time it was out, it was, I couldn't see where it had broken off. Um, there's no sort of visible fracture of the plastic so we'll have a look at that as well um so yeah with that let's crack on okay so let's get the front off uh this should be fairly straightforward we've got these two long screws and two screws at the top I think for memory that's it. Uh, obviously we have to look at, I've not put the bottom um, decorative strip on anyway. A little bit of a faff to get it off and uh, yeah I just think put it back on once we know everything's uh, good to go. So I'm going to unplug these now. think that has to come undone but uh, yeah that's cool we should be able to take this off two tabs on the side as well so two tabs each side I should say There we go. So, as you remember, it is just those two ribbons. So, um, it actually looks fairly straight. Uh, what was concerning me in, in part one was this, even though obviously I hadn't plugged it in, um, it didn't look straight somehow. So, I suppose I better check the um, well we'll take the front loading system out um, and uh, we'll just give it a quick check just, just see if it's um, okay so our stupidly extra long screwdriver which goes down Oops, there. Super, and uh, we'll unplug this as well. And then this should 
with a bit of negotiation. I know this isn't the easiest thing to get out. Come out. You're supposed to remove the two side boards. Um, in fact, shall we do that? Let's just do that. Um, I think I can get away with not removing that one. But this one, I think if I take this out... Well, I say take it out. God, that feels awful. It feels like it's broken. This one is definitely not right. So I'm just going to investigate that. Okay, so that one doesn't appear to have to come out. Or well, as Sam said that, yeah, it's broken. Actually, see, it's it's broken. So somebody's been in here before, unsurprisingly. Um, but I've just loosened this off. I had to take off um, the two black screws um, from the back as well, just to free it. But that should give me enough space to uh, get this out. So let's give it a go. Oh, I must have plugged, plugged that one in. So I put the one connector in, it's that one. But I missed the other one, which is this one here. So, uh, yeah. There we go. That's free. Super. Okay, so I do have a bit of a timing issue still. Um, this one, it looks correct. Um, but it's not quite correct. Um, I don't know. It just isn't quite right. Um, if I turn this over. This isn't fully down. Um, but it is lined up. But on this side, again, it's lined up, but it is down. It's like it's ever so slightly out. Um, timing wise, let's just have a look and we need to get it to the arrow. which you can't really see but there's an arrow there <clears throat> and that needs to point straight up to the line that's there which it does um that's straight down which is right and timing mark on here somewhere so just winding, winding this through, um, it is, I think it's completely out of time to be honest. Um, uh, we have to do the little tab things, don't we? So I'll just put you there, I can do them. What am I missing? There's one stop, which is fine. Another bit of plastic there. A bit worried about all these bits of plastic that seem to be floating about. Um, I don't want to add to those bits of plastic. <laughs> Why is that not? Ah, okay, so there's a lever there. That unlocks it, but that's still not doing anything. Ah. 
Right, so there's a lever here, there, and a lever there. So it is both sides. It's, it's the same sort of thing. So let's wind this on. And I'm probably going to hit a second one. Yeah. It's the same as the, the main shell. Move you back a bit. Ah, there we go. It's opening the, the um, flap. VHSC. And that's it. That's loaded. Okay. How does that feel? Well, it feels pretty, pretty well in the right position. Yeah, it is. Completely down. Okay. So using this as the, so this is the for full size VHS, um, but also for the VHSC. It, um, that's what opens the door, which is quite neat, actually. So let's wind this back. And I don't think I tested this, actually, on the, um, on part one. Like, all the way for VHSC, but of course I did miss that connector. So I'm going to keep winding. I don't know whether me leaving that on the floor it's going to cause problems still feeling fairly free but it should and this is very much like um, a Sony C9 um, with its front loading system it's on um, runners um, down the side and it just sort of pulls it down and that's so similar to um, a Sony C9 uh, Betamax where that's now seemingly jammed. Um, this connector that I missed, um, well I missed that one as well, but this connector as well, this seems to be the sensor for when it's up or down, um, which could be why it's just floating about and not doing anything. It was just totally um, confused. Um, yeah, I'd sort of like to get it back into VHS full size. Um, so that's, that seems fine. Uh, yes, yeah, so they're not timed yet. It's not in... Seem quite right. I mean, the thing is, as well, is with this, this is so floppy. I mean, it's just all over the place. Um, uh, I thought that was supposed to be from the manual. I thought that was supposed to be a. Uh, um, joining section but it's not okay well that doesn't matter then as long as the um i mean i will i'll, I'll fix that um but as long as the joining so there's quite a high torque portion 
to winding this and it feels, it really does feel like you're going to break a gear. And you just get past that and it's fine. So I keep on going. Oh, okay. That's good. So we're now in VHS full size. And that's going to load. And I mean, I could wind this on, but I just think it might be worth, I mean, it might be worth just giving it a go. Everything is looking correct. Okay, well, um, I think we ought to give this a try, to be honest. Let's just try it. I just think if I put this connector in, um, we might be somewhere near, and that would be fantastic. So, uh, yeah, let's give it a go. Okay, so we're all back together and put the screws in yet, but that's fine. Um, but what I'm going to do is try and give this a bit of a clean. And to do that, I'm just going to use um, an aluminium pan safe <laughs> scourer. I just very gently clean it with some warm, slightly soapy water. So uh, I'll do that and we'll see how it comes out. Well, that's looking a lot better. I'm actually quite surprised how well that came out. Um, I did use a, just a tiny bit of isopropyl. Um, there's some sort of sticky residue here, um, but um, I could see the paint was suffering. Um, and there are a few, now I've cleaned it, so I can actually see there's a, a, a few scratches across the top, nothing major, but uh, it was actually quite mucky. Um, so that's really cool. Um, and inside as well, that looks really good now. Um, just to wipe over and then dry it off with a cloth using the sort of warm soapy water. Um, but uh, yeah, that's cool. I'll sort all this out. Needs a bit of going over and in there as well. But uh, yeah, I suppose we ought to try it. When I think about it, I did say that this didn't actually have a fan, but it does. Um, and when I said it in the um, part one, I saw the four screws, I thought, it's got to be something there. And there is indeed a fan. You can see it there, just. Um, so, yeah, really cool, literally. Okay, so here goes. Um... I don't really know what to expect. Oh, that's still quite mucky in there. Yes, so just give it a clean. Um, let's power it on, see what happens. Fingers crossed it doesn't go horribly wrong. So far, so good. Let's turn it on. Oh, I'm plugged in the top connector. Right, okay, that's good. Um, so bottom connectors are in. Let's just check, because I don't trust myself. So those are the connectors that I missed previously. Well, it's the one. It's the one um, on a standard plug rather than the ribbon. Um, That's good. Okay, so let's power it on. Um, so, full size compact. Okay, so that's full size, compact. Right, so that's not working. And this is jammed, jammed shut. So let's try that again. Compact. I mean, it seems the deck's happy enough, which is good. Uh, still. It's like it doesn't even try. Oh, can I, I just can't get 
it in there. Oh, yes, I can. Yeah, motor's not rotating at all. It's not doing anything. Um, let's wind this on a bit. Let's get it somewhere else, anywhere else, to see what it might do. Give us a clue what's going on. No, it's staying full size. I think what... What it tries to do is when it tries to go into um, VHSC, it's actually putting back. So it does a, a, load, a, a half load sequence and then it pulls it back. And it's supposed to, if this is dropped and it senses that, um, I say dropped, um, the VHSC assembly comes up, it then pulls the, um, the loading. Um, guides right the way back and I think that's what it's it's doing but of course it's it's failing to do that it's failing to get into that um, that mode and I just I, I mean this is jammed it's jammed closed so obviously I don't know I I'm still must have the timing wrong I, I do don't I? I have the timing wrong so we're going to have to take it apart <laughs> again <laughs> and um, yeah, just see what's going on. So let's crack on. So I've taken the carriage out and I'm pretty convinced that I just wonder if the timing here is wrong because uh, I didn't really pay too much attention to it, although it did time up OK. Um, so yeah, I, I need to check that again. And uh, no doubt you'll join me on some of that uh, journey anyway. Um, and the other thing I have, I've bought some um, used VHSC cassettes. I just realised I haven't got any VHSC cassettes. Um, so just any old thing. It cost me something like a ten on eBay. Um, I've also got an adapter, um, which I've had for a while actually. I don't know how good it's going to be. It's probably going to be terrible. And I'm going to try that on the old uh, Panasonic. So, uh, yeah, I'll just see what one of the tapes is like. Okay, so uh, it is out. Um, seem to have already lost the. Um, oh my god, I've lost the battery cover. Already. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's put the battery in. It does say not to open the lid until you have got a battery in there. So let's let's do that. Let's be good. Immediately wants to just open the, the lid. Super. Okay, and you can see just how far back the uh, the posts need to go uh take up poles guides whatever you want to call them so let's put that in there well that's looking good so this has warmed up i've, I've got problems with capacitors on this and at some point i will um sort them out um but uh yeah let's give it a go now i'm not sure one of the cassettes alludes to it being super vhs which this isn't um And I think this is going to be a really exciting video on double glazing. Um, okay, so that's rewound. It was actually right at the end of the cassette, uh, which I didn't realise. Should have checked, maybe. So let's see what happens. Uh, there we go. Yeah, double glazing. Uh, looks to be done in long play. 
so which just doesn't support so that's why it's looking awful so um let's stop that rewind it This one suggests that it's short play uh, by its um, label. Now oh, it's got mould on it. Oh, I don't want to play that. Oh, Mouldy cassette. How can anyone sell sell that knowing it's mouldy? Um, luckily the one I had in there was okay. Uh, happy holidays. This will need rewinding as well. So. Let's put that in and give it a rewind. Well, this one's long play as well, and it's more exciting double glazing, so uh, that's really cool. Um, so, 2006, wow. So, uh, yeah, well, we know it works, and I'll know, I know the NVV 8000 will play long play, so that's, that's fine. I'm happy with that. I know I've got a couple of half-decent cassettes that I can play about with. That's when we get the carriage going, so, uh, yeah, let's crack on. Okay, so progress, um, but I haven't really done anything, but on removing it, I can now, well, the flap opens, I can push the cassette in. That's totally correct. Um, Timing-wise, it's it's in the ejected position on the, the mode switch. I know it's not where it lines up when you align the, the um, system, but that, I believe that is correct. It should actually be on that um protrusion rather than on the arrow in the uh, fully eject um full size um layout so i'm wondering when i'm putting this in whether i'm jamming something up um it's highly probable to be fair that that's that's what i'm doing um so i'm gonna have a look at the manual um, I'm going to work now to get this back into the deck, following the manual to make sure I don't trap anything. And, um, I mean, if there's anything of interest, I'll share that once I've done it. If not, we'll give it a try. So I think where I've been going wrong, I've looked at the manual and I'm doing everything right. It actually recommends that you do loosen off this panel just to make access a bit easier, which I've done. But I think where I'm going wrong is this portion here. Um, this needs to end up going into the um, into that section there, right in the middle there of your picture. Um, the rest of it, I think, will just find its own way with a little bit of jiggling around. It's just every time I put this in, it just doesn't feel right. Um, but I've um, got this assembly here. This is quite cool as well. So when these pull back for... Uh, VHSC actually moves the the sensor as well uh, so the central um, LED lamp which is tiny such a tiny LED lamp um, which of course it need to be but still it's it, it is a marvel of engineering I mean it's just so cleverly done um, it's total overkill but uh, you've just got to love it it's it's amazing um, even down to the Arrays protect. Um, you know, it's just just crazy, really. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to drop this in now and uh, see if I can do a better job this time. <laughs> okay, so I finally got it back in, um, and the trick was was to sort of put it in with the front side sort of facing higher than the the back side here. And just sort of lowering it in from from the back of the deck, 
um, and jiggling it about. I also had to partially lace the the deck, and that's because uh, if I can point to it, if the camera will focus. This bit here, if I try and point to it, oh, not easy. This bit here, this won't locate properly into the um, into the the VHSC mechanism unless it's free enough to move to get it in. Um, and the only way you can actually get it free enough to move because it's linked to this here. Um, is to just lace the partially lace the um, the deck. So I'm going to wind that back now, very carefully actually, just to make sure that nothing goes wrong. Um, but um, in fact, I should be able to actuate the lever. Um, which I can't. Um, but I should be able to. Yeah, so I can't, I can't move that. So I've still got something wrong, um, because that should move. Um, as I wind that back, I think, or maybe it doesn't. Um, because it feels, it feels completely solid. Um, it also looks wrong how it sat like that. Um, sort of just stuck out like that. Uh, yeah, I'm not happy with that. I just think that's going to cause problems when I put... Well, when it unlaces, it's just going to jam up again, isn't it? Hmm. No, it is actually correct. Um, it's the parking brake or parking end um, for the standard size cassettes. Um, it's plastic on this side. Well, this is actually an actuating lever here. It's really very difficult to film, uh, which, like I say, moves the LED in for VHSC. But this side, it's, it actually rests against it. Um, when the VHSC compartment comes up, it actually unlocks that lever, and that lever moves out the way. It actually moves um, outwards that that way, um, so towards here, uh, to allow this then to move back. But um, yeah, it's just crazy. But everything everything feels like it works. Everything feels like it's in time. I have some confidence that this might work. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I'm going to put these connectors in. Um, mustn't forget those. And uh, we'll give it a test. Okay, so final checks. That's plugged in. Uh, we are in sort of unlaced or unloaded. Um, ready to go. Got the connectors in the bottom. So, including those two from the uh, VHSC. But also the front panel connectors so uh yeah i suppose it's time to give it a try okay so here goes moment of truth so it's one of those moments again where as far as you're concerned it's completely and utterly timed and everything's fantastic but you don't want to power it on you don't want to know <laughs> okay so that's a good start um i've not got standby on the front which I'm a little bit concerned by okay so let's get the tape Ooh, it is playing um Well, I say it's playing, it's load it's loaded. Mm. 
wonder if I can't press play because I've got a bright light shining. Well, I can't press play. Um, I mean, it's all laced up. It's all looking good. Um, and it did. But I just can't press play. Uh, what happens if I eject? I can't. Can fast forward. Can't. Can't stop. Oh, I can stop. It doesn't sound as if the cassette is fully down either. I'm just wondering if I've got a problem with the um, with the. Connectors to the front panel not being quite in. Um, I'm certainly a lot closer, aren't I? Um, closest I've been. But I'm just a bit concerned. Just put it on top of the cassette. Uh, feels sort of down. Oh, that seems better. A shame I haven't got the remote actually. So that would have been quite useful. Most of these aren't working. Okay, I'll have a look at that connector. Okay, so yes, one of the connectors was an improperly and it's barely in at all. So let's power it back on. Um I'm still can't. Oh. Can't rewind and press play. Don't think oh, I'm right at the end of the cassette now. I think maybe. Can't see. No, I'm not. Uh, okay. Um. don't appear to have any real motor. Or was it just not? God, I still wonder if I'm a little bit out of time. Nope, I've got no real motor. Uh, not real motor, capstan. So the capstan motor is not rotating now. Um, okay, so better take a look at that, I suppose. I wonder if it'll eject. Um, no. <laughs> That's weird, isn't it? Don't know whether it's because it's in an air state or I've got something wrong with the front panel. So I can't rewind. I can fast forward. Well, I could. I seem to be able to do that now. Okay, well, we've made some progress. I mean, it's everything appears to be working so far. Everything's sort of gone back into where it's supposed to go, which is good. Um, what I mean is, is that the deck, sort of the first time the deck did anything, it was a little bit clunky, but it's now fine. Um, so... I just wonder what's going on with that. So I've now got no fast forward. Hmm, okay. Well, let's put a bit of see what's going on with the uh, capstan motor first. 
Okay, well, I've got the cassette back out. Um, it's power, power cycled it, um, which is good, and it came out fine. Um, the capstan appears to be totally jammed, or was totally jammed, so I've just um, turned the, the top adjustment for it sort of down a bit. It's almost right at the end of its travel, to be fair, so I've had to be really careful. Um, and it does seem to... It does seem to rotate now. It's a bit difficult. Yeah, it is. It's rotating. So, yeah, I don't know. But, yeah, nothing's sort of happening. The uh, pinch roller's fully engaged. Uh... But, yeah, it does leave some, rewind, so I'm convinced that carriage is going down quite enough because if I push down, It seems fine. So I might have to just investigate that. Um, but, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's a minor issue. Uh, this capstan is a bit concerning, I have to say. Okay, so I'm starting to wonder, I don't know if you can hear that creaking, whether I actually have a pinch roller problem. Maybe this pinch roller isn't compatible after all. I mean, obviously the pin is, but you can hear the capstan motor trying to do something. It's in pause at the moment, so I'm just jog using the jog uh, wheel. The back, forward, back. You can see some movement. You can see the like, reflection of the tape moving. Hmm, so I might have to just investigate that um, pinch roller, I think. Okay, so I've taken off the, the cap again, the adjustment cap for the, the height of the cap stand. And I've taken out the little um, graphite type um, top bearing, I suppose you'd call it. Um, that it goes against. It is worn in, on one side. I'm just thinking maybe if I turn it over... Maybe that will give us some leeway? I don't know. I just pushed it out from the top and um, it didn't even seem to be glued, to be honest. It's pressed in. So uh, let's give that a go. Well, this is still really odd. Um, I can hear that motor trying to move, um, but it feels incredibly tight. Um, I'm almost tempted just to try the other um, pinch roller because it, it's daft if I'm doing all of this and it's just a pinch roller. Um, I mean, I've put this back on pretty much where it was originally, actually. Because uh, it was nearly right to the bottom of the thread. Um, I think there's just one more turn left, which is pretty much where it was. Um, so, yeah, I think I might just try that. Uh, Object it. Oh, <laughs> that's not great. It's left the, the tape in there. Uh, Happy days. Okay, so I've put the old pinch roller back on. Um, just to see how we go. I don't see that's not really going quite far enough. Uh, 
Yeah, nothing. Let's try eject again. Yeah, it's fine. Don't know what that was all about. It uh, all seems a bit sloppy. I'd, I, th I mean, the other thing about it, I mean, it's it's a really old machine now, um, with a highly complex mechanism. I don't know what's been done to this before. Um, I was just a bit concerned that it's not quite. It doesn't feel like it's fully um, locking up here. So I don't know. Um, mm, okay. Uh, so it does look as if we've got a capstan issue. Interesting. So I can actually rotate it. Um, it's not easy to do, but I managed to rotate it actually at the capstan at the pit, um, capstan itself. Uh, because underneath uh, all of the logic, the made logic cam um, covers it, you can't see it, and to get to it, you've got to strip it all down, get the whole thing out, and then retime the deck. It's a bit of a nightmare. So I'm hoping I don't have to do that, but it may end up that I have to, uh, which would be loads of fun. Um, obviously, check that I have plugged in that ribbon cable it's a really long one um that you might have seen in part one um and I, i've just double checked that it's plugged in but you can hear the capstan trying to move it just feels like it's weak um but the other thing that's a bit odd is i'm not getting any video at all um i mean at the moment it's completely just off um no output at all um and even when i put it into pause and use jog mode um i think i've got I, I can't see i've got anything set in correctly um i'm just not getting anything um so what i might do is actually just try and put an e2e signal through it so i'll probably use the um the little portable panasonic for that um even though it's terrible it, it doesn't matter i just need to see something to see that it's working the other thing I need to test is going from full size to VHSC. So I'm just dreading trying this. But let's give it a go. There we go. Fantastic. Okay, so I've hooked up the Panasonic NVFS1 and um, it's using its own battery as well, to the front sockets of the uh, the V8000. And um, set it all up, it's all fine. Um, and I'm not getting anything at all. I have no output at all. I have checked that uh, cause there, there is a slightly dodgy connection on the copy box. If you're not careful, if it gets too um, disturbed. It can uh, be intermittent, but no, I've got straight through. It's fine. Um, so it's connected via a SCART output. Um, it's not ideal, but I'm just testing it at this stage. But uh, yeah, so uh, it looks like we have a video fault. And these are um, of the generation of machine that do suffer with bad caps. Um, so yeah. I don't doubt that probably there's there's bad caps. I mean, I think this is a fairly high hours machine as well. Uh, looking at the display, I know it's flickering a bit, but that leading zero is actually quite bright compared to the rest, and that's a good sign that probably it's a fairly high hours uh, machine. Um, yeah, so we just have to see really how how it goes. Um, so. That's going to be in part three. There's probably going to be several parts to this, to be honest. Um, it's going to be a bit of a labour of love, but so well worth doing. Um, so, um, issues we have at the end of this part. Um, carriage still isn't quite going down properly on the right-hand side, um, which is the easy fix, really, now. Um, the one take-up maybe isn't going... Um, far enough up um, again that's a fairly easy fix just need to check the timing on the um, on the underneath of the deck it's probably a tooth out to be fair 
We've got the capstan motor issue. Um, it appears to be jammed, although I can move it by hand, but if that motor is bad and I need to, to have a look at it, it's everything out from underneath um, because it's actually under the main cam uh, for the deck, so that, that's going to be a bit of a nightmare. Um, so I don't know how many parts we're going <laughs> to gonna have on this uh, machine but uh, well we'll persevere um, I mean it's all down to Joel as well it's how far he wants to go with it and whether I don't know if it starts getting really silly on the amount of hours um, whether he considered just giving it up and donating it to the channel as a, a project but I don't know um, I mean these machines are starting to get worth quite a bit of money now um, so and they're great. They're great machines when they work, I'm sure. Um, never seen one, like I say. So, um, lots more to come. I've actually got some really sort of exciting content that I would love to just upload. <laughs> but um, some of it's topical, some of it's sort of um, of a time of year as well. So, um, and if I uploaded everything, then I'd have to... Um, not upload for a few weeks to catch up um so yes lots more to come um we've got some it stuff uh lenovo lap uh, chromebooks to come um we've got um some interesting sort of vhs stuff as well jvc dv vhs deck um a couple of betas to sort out as well uh, finish those off and there's just lots so yeah it'd be great if you consider subscribing and uh, click that notification bell as well uh, I tend to only upload once a week sometimes I do um, a midweek one as well which is usually, usually either IT based uh, IT hardware or it's um, an eBay roundup I do really enjoy doing those every so often and I think some of you do too <laughs> so it's just like quite good fun really um so with that um i hope you enjoyed this one uh we have really made some progress and this still makes me smile so much it's so cool um so yeah oh, i love that it's really cool um, so with that, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I will see you in another video. Bye for now.